Would you pray with me? God, thank you for this opportunity. And thank you for the value that we find in sharing our stories. God's stories have saved our lives, and as we continue to share ours, may more and more people's lives find the hope that we have found in you. Be with us as we open up our hearts to receive your word this day. In Jesus' name, amen. So over the last several Sundays, as we have spent time learning to live life undaunted, daring to do what God has called us to do, we have embraced the promises of God that, one, we are God's masterpiece, and in so we are created in God's image, we are fearfully and wonderfully made, and that there is nothing, no thing that will ever separate us from the love of God. We discovered that we can share our love and be loved for the world by sharing not only our treasures, but our time and our talent as well. We found that we can share our hope and be hope for the world by shining our lights into a rather dark world. Sadly to say, very dark this past weekend. Providing guidance, dispelling darkness, and awakening the world around us. Last week we decided that we would be the change that we wish to see in the world. And we understood that we must discover the God appointment on the other side of every disappointment we encounter. The Samaritan woman at the well came to that well at Sychar in the heat of the day, at noontime when no other woman would ever find herself there, not realizing that she was in for the biggest appointment perhaps ever with God. Our scriptural lesson for today serves as the end of her story in John chapter 4. As told by him, he says that this woman shared her story with her neighbors, all those around her, and that her village was transformed because many heard her story and then believed in Jesus because of it. They found the hope that she had found in him simply by sharing her story. So for our consideration this morning, I would suggest that there is value in sharing story. Our stories do many things, but I'll share three of them with you today. Sharing stories sets us and others free. That's the first one. Secondly, sharing our stories allows others to share their gifts with us. And then thirdly, sharing our stories provides others a way back home. Let's begin by sharing stories that set people free. Go back with me to the early church witness, the book of Acts that Luke the doctor records following his gospel um, book. He records the history of the beginning of the church. The unlikely Saul of Tarsus was converted on the road, remember, to Damascus when he was struck and blinded temporarily by a bright light. Jesus is the light of the world, right? And during this divine appointment with Jesus, Jesus, Saul then becomes Paul and began immediately spreading the story of Jesus Christ with the known world at the time. One person, one heart, one new community, church community at the time. During his second missionary journey, we're told in um, Acts that Paul was traveling with a partner named Silas and they had come to Philippi. And upon entering a place of prayer, they met this sl slave girl who had a spirit of divination that was making lots of money for her owners by fortune telling. And we assumed that human trafficking wasn't in existence. That's what it was. Upon seeing these two missionaries, the girl would cry out, These men are slaves of the Most High God and proclaim to you a way of salvation. She did this, Luke writes, for many days. And as a result, Paul was sick of it. Paul was like, I'm sick of this and I'm sick of you, right? And so he orders the evil spirit out of her. And no sooner than he ordered the evil spirit out of this woman, who then was unable to make money for her masters, they were ordered to a prison cell. They were sent to the center of town, dragged to the marketplace, and before the authorities, they were attacked and flogged and then cast into the innermost cell of the prison, where the most dangerous criminals go. Why? Because they were telling the story of Jesus and providing so many people hope. And they were considered horrible criminals because nothing and no thing 
could stop them from sharing this story of Jesus. Paul and Silas, Luke tells us, began sharing their story even from a prison cell. You can tell it anywhere that you go. Luke says about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them. You share your story so others might hear, right? So when you share your story, people might listen. So keep telling it. Luke says that by telling, um, he tells us that as they continue sharing their story and they're praising and singing hymns to God, that there was suddenly an earthquake that shook even the foundations of that prison. So much so that the doors were flung open and the stocks in which they had been placed in had fallen off. The jailer, who was temporarily obviously knocked unconscious by this earthquake, awoke and noticed all the doors open and all the stocks released. And he feared those under his watch had escaped, and so he drew his own sword to take his own life when suddenly he heard Paul shouting, Don't harm yourself, for we're all still here. That jailer, upon hearing this good news, Paul's story, if you will, he ran into that cell where Paul and Silas were and he fell at Paul's feet and he said, what must I do to be saved? We're going to hear a song in a few minutes during our offering that talks about if I told you my story. If I told you my story, you would hear freedom that was won for me. If I told you my story, you would hear life overcome the grave. Because Paul and Silas continue to share their story even in the midst of their own crisis, right? They're, they're in prison. They weren't there visiting someone in prison. They themselves, because of their storytelling, ended up in prison. And their story set them and all those around them free. That's what happens, saints, when we tell our stories. That's point number one. Point number two is this. Sharing our stories allows others to share their gifts with us and help us along the way. Earlier in the book of Acts, Philip, one of Jesus' disciples, was urged, we are told by God, to take the wilderness road down from Jerusalem to Gaza, which was toward the Mediterranean. God clearly had a divine appointment awaiting him. And so Philip goes down as he was instructed, and on his way he meets up with an Ethiopian eunuch. He was an official of the court of Queen Candace, who was in charge. He was in charge of the queen's treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. And seated on his chariot, he was reading from the book of Isaiah. Luke tells us that the Spirit urged Philip to go over and join the chariot, and so Philip did. And then as he got closer, he heard the eunuch reading the Scripture. And so Philip asked the Ethiopian, Do you understand what you're reading? And the eunuch asked Philip some questions, and then Philip was able, Luke tells us, to proclaim to the Ethiopian the good news, the story of Jesus Christ. Philip was able to share his first-hand story of being with Jesus day after day and of the love that Jesus had for everyone. The man did not know the story until Philip had told him, and that man's life was changed in a moment. He ended up even being baptized on his way back home because Philip shared his story. And had he not been with Jesus all that time, he would not have had that story to tell. And when you know something and you know something good, aren't you ready to tell somebody? You can't wait to get somewhere where there is somebody so you can tell them the story. And Philip had the opportunity one more time to share the good news that he had learned of Jesus Christ. Do you realize that when we share our stories, we put that out there in the atmosphere, whether it's good, the, bad, the good, the bad, and the ugly. When we share those things, we had this happen in our spiritual transformation class, and not to share someone's own personal private story, but we had a participant in that group share a story of struggle for the last several years. They had been going through a difficult, difficult circumstance, and it seemed that they finally were coming to... It got even worse. It was so bad at this point that they didn't see any 
any light at the end of that proverbial tunnel. And they simply shared a prayer request with all those other people that were in the room. And you know, when they shared their story, and when they shared their predicament, there was one person in the room who knew exactly... And, and that person was like, I, I, I'm at my wit's end. I don't know what else to do. There's nothing else I don't think I can do. And you know, there was that one person in the room that could tell them what they needed to do. In less than five minutes after Bible study was over, they got together. The one person told the other one what they should do. You should go here. You should try this. You should talk to this person. Do you know by that next Monday, that situation was completely taken care of? Why? Because she was willing to share a story that was hurtful, that was exposing. But because that person was willing to share their life with another group of people, that they hang around every Wednesday night, there was someone else in the room that could help them. And do you realize the answer was there? That person didn't provide the answer. They told them, go talk to so-and-so down at so-and-so, and here's your answer. And do you realize about that next, by that next day, the people were on it. And by Monday, a solution was granted. If I tell you my story... You will see victory even over the grave. Saints, and then another person could share their gifts and their story of all the years of working in that field. They could offer a small tidbit of advice that changed someone else's life. Saints, when we share our stories, we set other people free. And we allow others an opportunity to share their gifts with us. This was another divine appointment at the end of a huge disappointment. Sharing our stories allows others to also share their gifts with us. Lastly, sharing our stories allows others to find their way back home. You remember the story of the prodigal in Luke chapter 15. Luke 15 is three parables about lost, three lost things. Jesus did things in threes too. <laughs> you gotta love Jesus. He talks about a lost coin, he talks about a lost sheep, and then he talks about that lost son. And you remember that story. The youngest of a man wanted his inheritance before his father passed away. Because, you know, he's from a small town. And he wants to get out and go to the big city and the bright lights therein. And so he takes his inheritance. The father agrees to do so. And the, he takes his inheritance and he goes. And just as it might happen, you know, that kind of goes as fast as it comes, as fast as it goes, right? And very quickly, he was without anything. He was flat broke. He ended up getting a job slopping pigs. He's having to eat the food that the pigs were eating. He had literally nothing. You've been there, right? You've been to the point where you're down to your last dime. You don't know where you're going to get something to eat. You don't know how it's going to happen. And I imagine, Luke doesn't tell us this story, but this part of the story, but you know, the guy is slopping pigs and he's thinking to himself, the hired hands at my daddy's house have it better off than I do. You know? And he decides, I can't really go home because I really burned that bridge, right? We've burned those bridges before. But he kept telling the story. And this isn't the part of the story that Luke tells, but I imagine he told that story and complained to so many people that they finally said, boy, go back home. Go back to your daddy and just tell him. Just go back home, right? And he said, I'll go home and just be a hired servant. You don't have to accept me back as a son. Just, just let me be one of your workers. You're better off than life that I've got, right? But what does the story tell us? One of the most beautiful descriptions in the Scriptures tells us that while the son was yet far off, what does the daddy do? He sees him and he runs toward him. And he grabs him and he embraces him. And he welcomes him back, not as a servant, but as the, having the special place that he always deserved. Saints, when we share our stories, it gives
gives us and others an opportunity to go home. Right? This week, a good friend of mine lost a family member. And you know, when we come out, you just don't think you can go back home again, right? And it's hard. But after a long time, you just try it just to see. And saints, do you realize sometimes when you share your story and you share your own story of having a difficult time going back home, because they just don't accept you as you are. But do you realize when you start sharing your own story, it gives others the courage to try it again and to have the freedom to walk back home and be accepted with arms wide open. Saints, when we share our stories, lives change. People are set free. And people find the hope that they didn't think they could ever find again. But you got to share your story. And when we do, more and more people find the hope and the love. And we can change because we know the story. That there's not one thing that will separate us from the love of God we find in Jesus Christ. And so this year, I invite you to tell your story. Join the movement. Share your story, right? And when we do, lives change. And people are given freedom and hope. And we find it so. I invite you. You were given, hopefully, a a pledge form today that looks like this, perhaps. (laughs) <laughs> and I will invite you to consider it, to fill it out. Did you guys get this form? Yes. Okay. If you'll take it home and think about what you might do and how you might pledge your time, your talent, and your treasure. When you turn this in, only the treasurer will see what you will donate on the bottom part of that form. The rest of it will be shared with with the office so that we might know how we can plug you in for your time and your talent and how you might share those things. And when you do, we realize that the more and more that we share, the more and more that we give back, others will find the hope that we found here. If you pledge, you'll get one of these. It'll be on a card like this that says B, and it's a beehive that's here on my lapel. And it says, be hope, be love, and be the change that we wish to see in the world. This encourages us, saints, that as we share these stories, lives are transformed, just like the woman at the well. There is value in our stories. Join the movement. Share your story. In the name of Jesus, amen.